What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together the Ultimate Ryzen 7000 series powered Linux gaming machine. Now with this we could run Ubuntu, we could run Arch, you can run any Linux operating system you want on something like this. We could set it up to dual boot Windows and that's probably what I'll do down the road. But you know for this video I think I'm just going to install SteamOS 3, otherwise known by some people as Steam Deck OS. This thing is definitely going to be putting down some really awesome power because for the CPU, I opted to use the new Ryzen 9 7950X, 16 cores, 32 threads, and a boost up to 5.7 gigahertz. Graphics are going to be handled by an ASRock OC Formula RX 6900XT. And Hynix was actually kind enough to send over 128 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, so we're just going to go ahead and shove it in this machine. Of course, it's way overkill, but there are some other things that we can do with this down the road, like running an entire operating system from DDR5 RAM, or even creating a RAM disk and installing a PC game to it. So, you know, if you're interested in seeing something like that, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on so you know when I post my next one. But, uh, you know, for this video, let's go ahead and jump right into the build. So when it comes to the case I'm going to be using for this build, I opted to use the new Nwin A5. This thing looks really great, it does have a tempered glass side panel, and it'll also fit this massive 6900 XT. Since we're using a new Ryzen 7000 series CPU, I needed a new motherboard with a new chipset. So what we've got here is the ASRock Tai Chi X670E. It's an EATX form factor. Personally, I love the look of it. We've got that black and gold four RAM slot, so we've got plenty of room here for that 128 gigabytes of RAM, and it supports up to four NVMe M.2 SSDs. I'm just gonna be putting one in here for this build, but you know, I've got plenty of expansion that I can do with this. As you can see, I've already situated the CPU in the new AM5 socket, and just as a reminder, we've got the Ryzen 9 7950X. This thing is crazy with 16 cores, 32 threads, and a clock up to 5.7 gigahertz. Storage is going to be handled by a 1TB Aorus Gen 4 7000 M.2 SSD. It's got a heatsink already on it out of the box, so I just left it there. I removed the heatsink that comes with the motherboard. We're just going to use it like this. And if I want to add any extra storage, I've got three free M.2 slots here. As for the RAM, I've got four 32 gigabyte sticks of Hynix running at 4800 megahertz. Obviously it is DDR5 because AM5 only supports DDR5. It would have been nice to have faster RAM, but this is definitely going to get the job done and we've got more than enough of it. And yeah, I really do like the look of this Nwin A5 case. I've also got the A3 that I want to do a build in, but the A5 is the one that supports the EATX motherboard. And this might look a little funky right now, but the power supply actually mounts in the front. And by the way, I'm using an EVGA 750 watt fully modular G3 power supply. And when it comes to keeping the Ryzen 9 7950X cool in this system, we have to go with the 240 millimeter AIO or air cooling. And I already had this Corsair H100 laying around. I purchased it last year and never used it. So we're going to go with this. Hopefully it can keep those 16 cores and 32 threads cool. So really the last thing to do here is to install the GPU and a little bit of cable management. And once it's finished up, it looks something like this. Personally, I think it came out great, especially with that modular power supply. I mean, you can hide everything behind that panel there and you just don't see any kind of cable mess. So with the rig finished up, I'm going to go ahead and make sure everything works. I'm going to install SteamOS 3 and then we'll jump right into some testing. All right, so I've got everything installed. We'll go ahead and boot it up. And the only thing that I've changed from the BIOS was the RAM speed. For some reason, this Hynix RAM actually defaulted to 3600 megahertz. So I just went back up to 48. Not an issue there. I didn't have to up the voltage or anything like that. So we're running 128 gigabytes of DDR5 at 4800 megahertz. And yeah, of course it's overkill for gaming. Now, the operating system that I'm using here is the same thing that's running on the Steam Deck, but this is actually known as Hollow ISO. You can head over to the GitHub page and download the image. Basically, it's a modified Steam Deck image that allows you to install it on many different systems. It does support NVIDIA and Intel GPUs, but it's got kind of limited support right now. And I've just had much better luck with AMD GPUs. I've tested a bunch of different graphics cards, and when it comes down to it, from the 500 series Radeon on up to the 6000 series, I didn't have to do any kind of configuration whatsoever. It just worked right out of the box. Now, as you can see, I do have Mango HUD running or the Steam Deck overlay right here, but it's cut off because it's trying to display all 32 threads and there's just not enough room there. You can go in and modify the scale of it, but what I'm going to do for this video is just kind of dumb it down a little bit so it doesn't show all of the threads. We'll still get the FPS and everything like that. 
And from the system settings, as you can see, we've got that 6900 XT with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. We've also got the new Ryzen 9 7950X, 16 cores, 32 threads, and 124 gigabytes of usable DDR5 RAM. So when it comes to the Mango HUD overlay, I'm going to dumb it down just a little bit and uh, it'll give us all the information we really need to know, GPU usage, CPU usage, and our FPS there. With everything, I'm going to try not to use any kind of FSR. I would really like to run everything at 4K if I could, but I'll let you know if I have to turn it on for any of these games. If you do end up installing this operating system on your PC, just note that you will have to change the resolution manually, because if you start up a game right now, it's just going to default to 720p, the resolution of the Steam Deck. And this might change down the road, but right now you do have to go to Settings, Properties, and you can change the default resolution. And we're going to go up to 4K here with each one of these games. So real quick, I wanted to show you something here. Now, when it comes to processing Vulkan shaders with Proton, uh, lower in CPUs can take a little bit of time. But with this, we've got 16 cores, 32 threads and it eats right through it. I was very surprised on how fast this processes everything. But as you can see, it really does hit that CPU up. And I've done a lot of testing with many different CPUs with SteamOS. Definitely the fastest processing I've seen so far, but you know, I kind of expected it with all these cores. Now it's time to test out some gaming on this machine. And first up, we've got Spider-Man Remastered. I'm gonna go into the settings for this one. I wanted to show you what I got here. Very high settings, 4K, no FSR. Now, I was actually expecting to have to turn FSR on with Linux in this game, but I guess the update that they've put out, at least for Proton, has fixed some of the issues that I've run into in the past with this game. Because as it sits right now, we can get an average of 92 FPS out of this game. 4K, very high, no FSR in Linux. I mean, this is some really great performance. But again, we've got a very powerful GPU and a very powerful CPU here. But either way you look at it, it's still really awesome to see this kind of gaming performance in Linux. Next up, we've got God of War at 4K Ultra with no FSR. In Windows, I'm sure I can get better performance out of this, but it's more than playable. And to tell you the truth, with a lot of these games, I wouldn't mind just turning VSync on. That's going to lower power consumption because we don't have to push that GPU and CPU so hard. But for this video, we're going to leave VSync off just to see what we can do with all of these games. And with God of War, we can get an average of 76 FPS. Moving over to Elden Ring, this is one that loves a powerful CPU, and we've definitely got enough power for this one. 4K, maximum settings, we don't need any kind of FSR, no scaling whatsoever. We're at a constant 60 with this, and it looks absolutely amazing. I completely understand that The Witcher 3 is an older game, but it's still one I personally love to play, and I also really like to test it. We're maxed out here with no hair works, 4K, and this is really close to getting a nice steady 120 FPS. If I dropped a few of the settings down, I think we could kind of lock it right there. I always like to throw at least one fighting game into the mix, so here's Injustice 2, 4K, totally maxed out. I mean, we've got everything set as high as it can go. And going into it, I knew we weren't going to have an issue running this. Unfortunately, with Linux, I've never been able to set the frame rate on this game to 120 FPS. I'm not sure what's going on there, but it always defaults to 60. Another one that gives some lower end systems a run for its money on Linux is Beam NG Drive. This really does require a decent CPU and GPU. And the way I've got it set up right now is 4K Ultra. We can get well over 120 FPS with this game. It's a lot of fun to mess around with different cars and see how bad you can really mess them up. When it comes to these next two games, I've had really great luck in Linux on mostly everything that I've tested these games with. First one is Doom Eternal. For some reason, this just works really, really well with Proton. 4K Ultra Nightmare, we can get well over 200 FPS on average with this one. Absolutely amazing performance. And the next one is Cyberpunk 2077. 
this just works so well in Linux using Proton. And in some cases, on these tiny PCs I like to test, especially the Ryzen ones, I get better performance in Linux over Windows with integrated graphics. It's actually pretty crazy to see that. And with this system, we're at 4K high settings, no FSR. And as you can see, we're right there at around 100 FPS on average. You can run this at Ultra, but it does dip down unless you turn on FSR. So yeah, I mean, it still looks great like this and we're getting amazing performance. So I'd say this is also fully playable. So even with SteamOS 3 installed, we still have access to the desktop. So it's not just a gaming rig the way it sits right now. It's a fully functional Linux PC. If we head over here, we can swap right over to the desktop. The system here is based on Arch. So I mean, anything that we can do on a regular Linux operating system, we can do over here also. We've also got access to Discover, just like we do on the Steam Deck, so we can go through and download our favorite applications and emulators without even having to touch Terminal, but if you want to get down to it, you can install basically anything from Terminal. Web browsing works out really well on a system like this, and you know, if you wanted to go through and download some of your favorite emulators, this is going to handle anything you throw at it. Overall, I think the build turned out really good, and to tell you the truth, SteamOS 3 worked much better than I thought it would. I didn't have to do any kind of tweaking to get that Ryzen 7000 series CPU up and running, or the RX 6900 XT. I'm probably not going to leave SteamOS 3 on here. I might go with a different distro, probably Manjaro, and I've got more room for drives, so I'll go with like a dual boot setup, Windows 11 and Manjaro. But this was something I really wanted to test out on a high-end rig, and it worked out pretty well. If there's anything else you want to see running on this, be it a different operating system, emulators, more games, let me know in the comments below. I have a few things planned, so if you're interested in seeing more, make sure you hit that subscribe button and think about turning notifications on so you know when I post the next one. I will leave links in the description for all the parts that I used, but that's it for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.